Hi, I'm Michael O'Connor, and welcome to the Extra Time, a St. Eckens TYGA Future Leaders podcast. Please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for all future content. Today, we are delighted to welcome a former stu student of St. Eckens. After representing and captain Ireland at underage level, he now plays in the League of Ireland for an up and coming Cove Ramblers. He was also an incredibly talented GA player. Welcome to the show, Dar Walsh. Thanks very much, Michael. Uh, at what age did you start playing soccer? I suppose as soon as I could walk, I was probably kicking a football around. Um, my dad was very involved in the soccer club in Port Law, so I suppose that's probably when it all started for me. And you know, anywhere, yeah. any matches that say he was managing, I was always there. Someone used to bring me along, so I suppose it was oh. kind of bred into me from a young age, really. So that's where it all started yeah. for me. And um, did you start after GA too, Daryl, at the same age, or did you start younger or older? Yeah, it was probably around the same age I started the GA. Uh, I know in Port Lauderdale, they used to do kind of the, the tiny tots where, you know, you go over to the, the field and they used to just get you kind of into the game, into the sport, really. So it was kind of the same same age. We kind of, when you're young, like, you just kind of, you throw your hand at that, and really, you know. Um, so that's where I really started. Like, in fairness, the facilities and in both uh, both fields are great so we're very lucky and um, yeah so that's where I kind of started for me on both fronts uh, Ambitions Yeah definitely um, I mean kind of the whole way up when the soccer was going well I always kept my uh, foot in with the with the hurling and the football for as long as I could anyway um, I mean I was on a few of the, the development squads there so like I won't say it was. It wasn't the uh, just keeping your options open more than that, and really like because I used to. I I actually used to enjoy the GA because it used to take your mind off it. It was a complete different sport, so you yeah. were learning different skills playing hurling, say with your coordination, and then obviously in the football your your fitness and all that as well. Like so, I think kind of only for I played all three sports really. It kind of helped me out in the soccer in the end. Um, and as I said, you know, you, you get a break and you're probably playing with different lads with your friends and that. So, yeah, that's that's kind of it, really. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Uh, can you tell us about your experience in Ireland? Yeah, so it kind of started um, under 15 level, I suppose. Um, there was a tournament, uh, the Kendi Cup, it's called. So, that after that then you kind of get selected to go up to Dublin for a few trial games and that so I suppose my first experience we played a Dublin team just in a kind of a challenge match a friendly match um, that was kind of the very first experience then under 16 I was lucky enough to go to Wales um, to play in the Victory Shield so we played Scotland England, uh, Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales and that so like I mean that was a savage experience there like because at the, at the time, like they're all just lads that are your age, but like some of them, like Aaron Connolly's gone on playing with Brighton and the and the senior team, like Leo Connor is there. Do you know, there's Jordan Doherty, he's playing in the MLS over in Australia. Like, so at the time, we're all just friends, but like the, obviously, lads' careers go on different paths. There's some lads that aren't even playing anymore, but the, um, that first game against Wales, actually, it was, I remember it very well. I think we got bet 1 0 at the night or 2 0, but. It was just such such a proud moment. It's really hard to describe, kind of. Um, like, looking back on it is really when it kind of sinks in just how much of a experience it was. You don't really take it in at the time, but, like, looking back on the jerseys and the caps, that's kind of when it hits you and you kind of realise what you've achieved, but you're always kind of wanting to do it again. There's no end to it, really. So that was kind of under 16. And then, obviously, I was lucky enough to captain... Uh, the under 18 school team as well which you can't get any uh, any prouder than that so look it was great it was great for the for my family as well like because you know they put a lot of hard work in over the over the years as well so like all around they were just just very proud really uh, it must have been a fantastic opportunity to captain Ireland yeah definitely um, I, it was the day before the match the manager called us over and told me I was the captain so Kind of straight away after the after the conversation, I was on the phone to my dad saying, "Ah, look at this, brilliant!" But he said, "Look, it's great, your captain, but you still have a match to play." 
So he kind of brought me back down to earth fairly quickly. But uh, now nah, looking looking back on it now, it was it was really really fantastic. And the fact that it was in Dublin, a lot of uh, a lot of my family got to go to it as well. So it's just things that you look back on when you're older and you really are going to appreciate. It, so it was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, you played in multiple positions. Which one was your favourite? Well, that's a good one. Um, I like playing left back probably a bit more so. It kind of gives you the freedom to attack a bit more. Centre half, you, sometimes you're very restricted to where you can go in that. But yeah, probably I probably have to go left back there. That's kind of where I'm playing at the moment as well. So I'll have to say that. Uh, you're still very young. Do you think you might get an opportunity to go over to England? Um, yeah, look, if the opportunity ever came about, it would definitely be worth considering. Um, as you said, I'm still young enough and I'm still in college, so I'm trying to get that out of the way. Um, but you know what? Just because if you don't go to England doesn't mean that it's, it's not to be all and end all. There's so many opportunities across the world mm. with football, um, be a coaching or playing or whatever. Like, so look, if the opportunity ever did come about for me to go over. Definitely would be would be considered, um, but we will just have to keep going at the way we're going at the moment anyway, and see where it takes us. Uh, how hard is preseason? Not <laughs> very hard. Um, yeah, it was very tough. The last kind of I'd say now at this stage has been about ten weeks. We are kind of given an off season program to work towards preseason, and then preseason got pushed out another two weeks. So there was another two weeks running thrown in there as well. So I think the game is kind of developing more so that it's less kind of the old school mentality of run, run, run. It's more high intensity stuff with the football more than that. Um, it's less kind of laps of the pitch. Although they'll still get thrown in at the end of a session, no doubt. But it is once the intensity is there with the football, kind of that's the way managers like it more so now than, than the old school ways. Um, how do you find the standard in League Ireland? Yeah, it's very good. Um, especially this season, the first division will be very, very strong. Um, a lot of big clubs like Cork City, Shelburne, Galway United, like uh, they're all massive clubs that are down in the first division. So this year, more than any year, it's definitely going to be the most competitive in a while. Um, so the standard is very, very good. There's a big jump between underage football to senior level. Same as GA when you go from minor and under twenty one up to senior, like the physicality and all that, like it's just there's such a big difference. So that's definitely one difference. And then just obviously you don't get as long on the football either. Uh, it's a lot quicker, and you just have to know where you're going to play before the ball comes to you. Really, uh, Daryl, what, like? what, Daryl, what do you make of um, the fact that you know, like say for instance. I, people in Ireland, right? So I support Liverpool. I watch Liverpool every single week. But yet, even I, I'm guilty of it as well. I don't go down to the RSC to watch Water for United. <laughs> and like, you know, how how are you going to increase the crowds in the League of Ireland? You know, how are they going to get numbers up so they can get revenue up so the standard can improve, the prize money can improve, and then the clubs don't seem to be struggling financially all the time. Yeah, I think that's the goal in question, kind of really at the moment. Um, in fairness. I think once you actually go to the game and you get the feel of it, like there's nothing like a live match. You can watch all the Premier League matches on the telly you want or whatever, but it's not like that atmosphere that you get at a real game. <clears throat> I mean, even last season at Cove, I think our first game, we had eight or 900 people at it. So once you go, you kind of get the feel for it and you want to go again. And you know, there's a good buzz around the place. That's when it kind of happens, I suppose. The other side of it then is with the revenue and that it's everything to clubs. Um, like I'd say 90% of the clubs in the league are just going from week to week after match day revenues. So that's definitely the thing has to be increased is the people coming to games, whether it be through sponsorship or whatever. But I think in fairness, they're not doing a too bad a job the last few years trying to prom promote the game around Ireland. I think a lot more could be done with kind of primary schools or secondary schools just to kind of tap up the youngsters, say, and get a parent into a match or buy one, get one free or whatever it may be. I think that's definitely something that could be looked at um, because 
you know, even when you go, if you do go down to the RC to a game, you, you do see a few youngsters, but not really as many as you should be should be there. Like, uh, what was it like winning the cup with your friends in school? Yeah, that's the one thing that I say about, um, say my underage career. That was the highlight. Um, even like say winning the cup of Waterford was brilliant, but it's just you're winning stuff with lads that you've grown up with. Um, lads in poor law from four and five the whole way to your till you're eighteen. Like you kind of you don't get any better than winning with your friends. Um, we had a very good team that year. Um, I know a good few of the lads have gone on have had good careers out of it. Like they're still kind of still all young, but. It was, it was, it's hard to describe that day, really. Like, it was just such a, a thrill, like, and even Mr. O'Neill and, and Mr. Curley, like, it keeps them going, too. Keeps them all interested in it. And I'm sure you know, sir, when he won the hurling and he got to the All-Ireland to find, like, you know, it just gives the whole place a lift, really. Like, it's just, you come into school the next day and you're just buzzing off it, like, and everyone's talking about you. It's, it's just unreal, really, like. Can I just ask you, Daryl, you mentioned like Mr. O'Neill there now, since I started teaching in St. Jackson, like the man, he is Mr. Soccer when, and like he's been unbelievably successful. You talk about the GA teams, but consistently, like Mr. O'Neill puts good winning teams together and um, like he must have had a big influence on, on your career and, you know, and he as he has on in multiple people's careers, like because the school has produced some serious soccer players over the years. Oh, without a doubt, the man lives... Uh, lives for football. He every lunchtime, I'm sure you would have seen him up on the pitch, whether it's under 15, under 17s, under 19s, whatever team. He's always up there. He's either up there, or he's in having a meeting with the team down the down the classroom. He is just what he does for the football in that school is unbelievable. And in fairness to Mister Curley, gives him a good dig out on match days as well. But like as you said, he's had such an influence on like so many people's careers, like. Conor Morrissey down through the years, Kevin Burns played League of Ireland on goal, himself, Dara Power, Ben Corwin, to name a few from that team that um <clears throat> that won the, the cup that year. Like he's just had such an influence on it. And do you know I don't know what it is really. He's just a very good man manager. He just seems to get the best out of players. Um when they're all put together, like you know, he just gets the best out of everyone. So yeah, he's he's unbelievable in fairness to him, and, and he still does keep in touch. Like that's the one thing I'll say about he, everyone in Kilmac does the same. Like, you know, they're always interested in how your careers go after it as well. So that's that's really really nice of him as well. So, uh, do you ever think of play GA again, like Desi Hutchinson? Definitely. Um, <clears throat> if it doesn't work at the soccer, it would be something to think about. Mm. Uh, even there's a few times, you know, you pick up the hurley, you have a tap around with the lads, you know, you're kind of itching to get back at it. Um, hopefully someday I'll get to, to play again because it's, it's unreal as well. Like, even going to matches, you know, you just come back, you just want to, you want to be playing and hopefully I'll, uh, I'll get the chance again. Hopefully it might come around for me if I stay injury free, <laughs> that is. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, definitely would be one of uh, the things I'd like to do, all right. Would you like to represent? I know you were there before, but would you like to represent Warford United again? Or because I know there is a lot of movement in the League of Ireland between players and the way the contracts are. But I suppose being, you want you want to play Premier Division, obviously. Yeah, that's it. That's the highest level you can play in Ireland is the Premier Division. So definitely, it would be something to think about if an offer came in. Um, it whether it be Watford or another club in the league, like it would definitely be another uh, another thing to consider. Um, obviously, if it's your hometown club that you've been following since you're five or six, like it's something that you'd you'd love to do and love to represent. And I've I, I've I've loads of good friends in in the club inside, so definitely if the opportunity came about um, and all things were were right, it would be something to consider. All right. I am. Um... I'd like to thank Dal for coming on the show today and sharing his experience with us. We wish you and Cove the very best next season. Can I ask you all to hit the like button and subscribe as it has really helped out the channel. Stay safe out there and we'll speak to you soon on extra time.